Hello YouTube, Sebastian here and welcome to another video. Last time we did the perfect top down movement for our character and today I'm going to show you how to apply collision checking to this character and um, yeah, let's get straight ahead and do it. So I, I'm doing this because I got a request to do it. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna do it. So first of all, we need a new sprite. Just we'll just add a sprite. It's just gonna be sprite wall. Just sprite wall. There we go. And I'm gonna just fill this out. Cause this is just gonna be um, the walls that we're gonna collide with. Let's just let give them this gray color. And let's create an object because this is just gonna be the uh, the object that we're gonna collide with. So. So last time I showed you how to do the movement and we have that all set up. And the next thing we want to do is we want to do the collision. So the collision is basically going to work. We're going to check if where we're trying to move dependent on our velocities. And depending on those, we'll tr try and figure out whether or not we should move or not. So the thing about this is if there is a collision, we want to set our velocity to zero. Because our x and our y will plus equals the velocity x or velocity y, so we need that to be zero whenever we hit a wall. So a really neat way to do this is a way that I learned off from uh, Sack Bell Games. Um, he has a website, and it's really good. He has a lot of great text tutorials, and one of them were about this collision system that he has made. Well, I don't know if he's made it, but I use it now. It's my favorite. I had another one I used before, but it's this one right here. It's pretty simple. There'll, of course, be a link to it in the description, so you can just copy and paste it if you want to do that. Or you can pause the video here and just write it down. But I'm going to write it out with everyone and uh, like now, and then I'll explain how it works. So, first of all, we need a repeat loop repeat there we go because the way this works is we're gonna run through this code the amount of times that our velocity is so we're gonna do it for the absolute amount of our velocity we're gonna do the x1 first so at x because we're gonna do this horizontal and vertically so we're starting horizontally with the x so if not place meeting so we're going to repeat this as I said the same amount as of times as our velocity is equal to so if our velocity is 3 we're going to go do this 3 times um, so let's get to it. so I'll be referring to this because I can't remember it inside my head yet um, because I haven't used it that much yet but so first of all we're going to do a if we're not meeting an object to our x plus the sign value of our velocity at x and our watch and our y value and then the o wall that we want to check for so the sign function what this does right here this sign if you don't know that it just takes any value and then it like returns like a 1, minus 1, or 0 depending on that value. So if the value is positive, any positive number put into the sign function will, will return a, a 1. Any negative number will return a minus 1 and a number of 0 will just return 0. So this right here is basically, you can say it's a way of, like, uh, of um, getting the information about a number whether or not it's positive or negative or it's zero. So we're going to check, so in this case, in the first iteration of the repeat loop, we're going to check and our x position plus one or minus one or zero, depending on what our velocity x is. Then, so if we're not placing or if we're not meeting anything, then we're going to say our x will plus equals sign of velocity, oh, velocity at x. So if you aren't meeting anything one pixel to the right, for an example, if our, let's say our velocity is three, we're gonna run, run through this three times. And first of all, we're gonna check if we're not placing, if we're not meeting anything, 
at x plus the sine of 3, which will be 1 then. So if we're not meeting anything at x plus 1, then we're going to move 1 pixel to the right. Else, then we are meeting something, and what we want to do is we want to set our velocity at x equals to 0, and then we want to break, because we want to break out of the repeat loop, because there's no reason to run this repeat loop more than we have to. Um, so let's say that our velocity was maybe 10, and then halfway through, so at 5 pixels, we move 5 pixels through this, and then you meet a wall. Then we don't want to re run the rest of the code 5 more times, because that's just a waste of code or waste of uh, processing powers, so that's why we have that there. Then we're going to have a repeat. Again, this is just going to be exactly the same, just in the y uh, direction. So we're going to have it for the uh, the absolute value of our velocity y. And the reason, of course, is we cannot repeat a number that is negative. So if our velocity was minus 3, then we would get an error right here. So we want to do the absolute value so we're gonna do if not place meeting and then our x comma y plus sine of velocity oh there we go at our y location there we go comma the o wall so if we aren't there meeting anything there then our y will plus equals sine of velocity at y, there we go, else we're going to have velocity, um, yeah, velocity at y equals zero, and we're going to break. So right now, since we have this right here, we don't need this piece of code here that says x plus equals velocity, because that's going to be handled inside of this code so this will just be redundant so just delete that and let's put in some objects and see if this works so I'm just going to go into my room select the wall and just hold in alt and then just start drawing these guys in here so let's just give them the player something like this so oh dang it let's just delete these two so we have something to move through okay so here we go. I'm just going to check the collision mask on the player to see if it's anything weird. It's not. It's just a uh, circle. Let's, let's do a. Can I do an ellipse? And that's almost perfect. Let's just do a precise. Because we don't have to do anything else. No. No, no. Actually, precise. That's really bad to use. I'm sorry for this. Let's just use a rectangle. Doesn't matter. Let's play the game run the code, let's see if it works, and then let's go through it one more time. So, as you can see, we can still move as before, but now we stop once we are here, and we can move through the walls. So, as you can see, There seems to be a problem when we're moving diagonally. I don't know if you can see that, but we are moving a lot, lot slower because I think that the repeat, the repeat value, I think that is actually messing up because we are getting, we're passing in 2.8, and I don't think that it can handle a 2.8. I think it has to be whole numbers. So if we just middle mouse click the repeat and go into, we'll open the manual here and we'll just read about it real quick yes okay so it says nothing about numbers that aren't whole so what if let's say we do the rounded value because that, like, the rounded value probably will give us a little bit faster diagonal speed, speed than before. But it won't be a huge deal. So now you can see we're moving a lot faster. 
So you know what? We are gonna accept this one for this time, but I do know the fix on how to actually fix this so that the diagonal will be fixed. And we're gonna do that in the next video because I'm gonna talk about some sub pixel movement because right now our code will only handle like whole movements. We actually won't move at a speed at 2.8 at any given time. Um, especially because our X will be rounded to an X position, uh, so it'll always be a whole number. Um, and so will the, will the Y. So even if your speed would be, I think, 3.5 and 4 should, in practice, have the same speed. Yeah, because this will be rounded up to 4 using this code. And of course, this one diagonally will be, will be rounded down. So right now, this isn't working super good. So you know what? We're going to fix it in this video, actually. Forget that I said that, and we are going to do it in the next one. We're going to do it in this one. So we're going to have a sub pixel velocity now. So this is going to be tricky. We're going to, or it's not really, we're going to have a sub velocity as well. And let's just set that equal to zero, comma zero, there we go. So this is going to be used for calculating the sub pixel movement. And in our code right here, we are going to have this. So we're going to start with our sub velocity at x plus equals our velocity at x. So right now I'm just going to type it out, all of it, and um, then we are. I'm going to go through it a bit afterwards, and we are going to. I'm going to explain it to you. So then we're going to have a variable new x, which will equal the round value of sub velocity at x. There we go. Okay, so this is basically the the code for everything right here at y minus equals new y. Okay, so how do, am I going to explain this? That's a good question. So, what we are going to do is, right here, this code, we're going to have this sub-velocity variable that will actually be the one that we'll use for movement, or actually that will be the new x. But what's happening here? Okay, let's come with an example, let's just calculate it together. So, let's see, we have a speed of 3.5. So our sub-velocity, will add our velocity to that, so let's say our velocity is 3.5 our sub velocity will then be 3.5 then we'll create a variable called new x then we'll round that number which means our sub velocity x will then be um, when we round it up we'll round up to 4 and then what we're going to do is we're going to take our sub velocity which is still 3.5 and we'll minus or subtract the 4 from that so now the sub velocity will be minus 0 0.5 and then next time we go through it we'll add the velocity of 3.5 to it again which means the sub velocity will be 3 exactly and then we're going to round that to 3 and what this basically means is sometimes we're going to move a pixel more sometimes we're not depending on what our maximum speed is and this will just give the illusion that we're moving less than one pixel sometimes so instead of using this repeat round value we're just going to do new x and we're going to do new x right here and in this one down here we are oh, of course it still has to be at the absolute there we go why is this not what is it saying syntax error Oh, 
I have too many uh, parentheses. Okay, here we go. So this one's going to be new X. This one's going to be new Y, of course. There we go. So now we are checking for this variable, new X and new Y, instead of the uh, velocity var variable directly. And this should actually fix our problem totally. So as you can see, we're moving at a speed of 3.5, it seems, to the right and to the left. And we are moving, what well, it seems like it's the same speed up in diagonal. So we fix that, which is pretty cool. And just for testing measures, we can just um, go into the room and then I'll just delete some of these uh, the collisions here except for the back wall down there because we know the collisions work so just to prove to you that this actually works we're just going to drag in another player and we are going to go into the creation code and then set the speed equal to 3.6 so this one will have a little bit of a faster one and then we're going to have another player right here that will set the creation code and will set speed to be equal to 3.9 and we should hopefully see that they all move at different speeds so if we just select these and just move them back here and then play the game if everything's done right this works so if I hold right now the middle one should be the slowest the bottom one should be the middle speed and the, the uh, top one should be the fastest so let's see so as you can see it works, the top one's definitely faster and the uh, the middle one's definitely the slowest and the bottom one is in the middle. So it's not a whole lot faster than for example the, uh, the one above it. So you, the bottom one is not a whole lot faster than the middle one which is to expect it since its speed is only 3.6 instead of 3.5 so it's only 0.1 higher but this is actually pretty neat. So it works. That's mesmerizing to look at. But now, there we go. Now we're done. We have the best, maybe, I don't know if it's best, but it's really good top-down movement. Um, it's the best that I can do right now. And we have sub-pixel collision-ish movement. So, yeah. There we go. I really hope you enjoyed this or learned something from it. And, uh, I, I hope you got something from it, and uh, I would really appreciate likes and subscribes and all that sort of good stuff, because it really helps me out, and uh, really appreciate it. Have a nice day. That's been all. Goodbye.